Okay, so it's time to start cycle 13, which is broken into two pieces, A and B, uh, where we're going to be talking about uh, some polishing, some deployment uh, ideas here. Now, throughout the, the, the day, throughout the training, we've been talking a lot about you know, mobile efficiencies, mobile deployment, how would we, how would we prepare, how would we deploy for mobile, what does that mean, you know, things like that. And so, first off, for 13A, we're just going to do a little bit more preparation for mobile. Now, if your intention is not to, to build to mobile, then you won't necessarily need to do these steps because they're, they're specifically aimed at mobile. And, you know, that's fine if you don't want to. The, you know, Ravi Swift Hand is actually a PC game, but we, we have converted it to work uh, on mobile platforms, and we're going to take maybe a quick look as to how. Another thing real quick before we start to, to consider, and I know this has been said before in the training, we really want to consider efficiencies when dealing with mobile, especially considering we have you know, a lot of moving real-time lights, we have some shadows and stuff like that. Depending on the mobile platform we have and the, the GPU capabilities of it, we may have some issues with, with all of those lights that so we may need to reduce, we may need to test. Uh, it could be, you know, it could be challenging to make it look the same as on PC. And that's that's very obvious. Mobile games never look, you know, as good as PC games because the hardware is just not as powerful. And so we couldn't, you should not expect to just take a game, you know, made and tweaked on PC and just click a mobile button and have it look and behave exactly the same. Uh, and so... Now that's just sort of a, a fair warning to throw out there, especially with this scene when we're trying to do, you know, these real sort of dynamic uh, real-time lights on this 2D stuff, and we have several of these lights throughout the scene, what we're going to notice is that on mobile platforms, we're going to have a hard time, you know, lighting up our whole scene with these set of lights, right? So those are just, you know, something to, to be aware of when dealing with this. Okay, so with that all being said, right, what we can do is, you know, we can save our scene, and if you are completing these mobile steps, you could do save scene as to save it as a new scene so that you don't uh, lose out on, you know, uh, maybe you want to keep a PC version versus mobile version or whatever. I'm going to complete everything from within one scene here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I, I have two canvases I want to look at. So the first is this thing called debug canvas. I'm going to drag this in here. Now this serves no real game purpose and this is something you wouldn't include in a an actual a build or a ship of your game. This is this is for testing on device uh, while you're in development. And what this debug canvas is, it's basically just a, a text uh, UI text element here, uh, and it has a script on it that's going to calculate our frames per second, uh, how quickly the game is running. That way on a mobile device, as I'm playing it on my, say my phone or my tablet, I'll see in the upper left-hand corner a readout of, oh, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 10 frames a second, whatever. So it's purely just debug for that, and if you're curious about how the script works, you can check it out. It's very simple. I believe it. I got it from the Unity wiki or it's modified from that or whatever. So that's just our debug canvas. So the other thing that I'm going to look at here is this mobile input canvas. And this one's actually kind of interesting. So I'll drop it on here. And so we have uh, a couple things. We have this, this thumb jump button right here. And we have this thumbstick control, which, and let me just zoom out there. So we've got this jump button here, and then we've got this thumbstick control with this circle. So that's going to behave, you know, kind of just some graphical, oh, I'll click here, jump, and I'll, I'll, I'll tap here to, to move and, and drag like a thumbstick. The actual code in the, the, that makes these work, this touch button and this thumbstick, is mostly cosmetic. And, you know, we could look at it, it's, it, it's a bit more complex uh, than you would think. And it's not complex to actually make it work. It's actually quite simple to make it work. Uh, the complexity comes from the cosmetic nature of it, right? And so by that, I mean the thumbstick, we want it to visually move with your thumb within a sort of a bounding box area. When you let go, it should snap back to the center like a real thumbstick and whatever. So most of the code in here is, you know, just for, you know, clamp data and move image and normalize the range and apply axial dead zones and whatever. And so, yeah, it's it's worth, uh, you know, just, just understanding that the code's not really super complex. And things like this, the axial dead zones versus radial dead zones, just have to do with uh, how do we want this to just read inputs uh, like an old school sort of directional pad. So up, down, left, right, or do we want it to read in a, a radial distance uh, and and how do we want that to function 
And so the way these controls work is we're going to be able to go left and right to move left and right and, and down to crouch with one hand and on the other hand touch to jump. Uh, and as such, we're going to be using um, axial. Uh, but, uh, but again, this isn't super important to the training. Uh, it's really just uh, I wanted this to behave kind of cool and, and look interesting. So I threw this extra bit in there. It's you know not imperative to really understand it. It's really just sort of a, a drag and drop solution anyway. Uh, and so once this is in my scene here, we'll see this function here in a moment. Uh, I'm going to go to my Robbie character here. And I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to find the player input script that we've been using before. And so what I, I can see here is uh, we have these things that we haven't really been using yet because we've just been using the keyboard, and it's worked great. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, while we're in the editor here, I do want to test touch controls. Uh, and now I need to say, okay, well, what's my thumbstick? Well, if I click the circle selector, there's only one thumbstick in my scene. And if I select my... Uh, jump button there, and there we go. So now we have these set up. And I'll go ahead and hit play. And now that I'm hitting play, now granted, I only have a single mouse, and I'll go ahead and read that audio. I only have a single mouse, so I can only do one of these at a time, unless I hook up, like, say, the Unity remote. Uh, but there's my jump button. I click it, or I would tap it on a mobile device, and character would jump. Uh, and uh, then otherwise, you'll see here, I can drag left and right. And there's more of the cosmetics of the thumbstick. And if I drag down, my character will crouch. So down, left, down, right. My character is crouching. If I want to crouch jump on PC, I have to actually use the keys, my left hand there, to then jump with my right. And then I can just play by, you know, moving my, using my left hand to, to move, my right hand to jump, or by clicking on the mouse or whatever. All right, so we can we can make that sort of whole thing work there. Another thing to point out is our, our debug canvas was showing us our frames per second there. So we can see that nicely. So uh, just frames per second and milliseconds of processing. So we can, you know, say, okay, cool. Let's, you know, let's adjust. Let's make it better or worse or whatever, depending on our platform and how it's performing on those platforms. Now, speaking of that performance, I'm not going to go through and tweak each one of my lights right now. But what I am going to do is I'm going to just play around or take a, a look at my post-processing. And so right now I've been using the same post-processing profile uh, that we set up previously here. Uh, it's my global reference. So some of these things are very heavy on mobile and some of them are, are rather light. So I look at Bloom, I can see Bloom even has a fast mode, which is aimed at mobile. Uh, and then uh, not even yet, one of these other ones does as well. Maybe it's a chromatic aberration, there we go. But then we have things like ambient occlusion, which not only doesn't have a fast mode, but is also really heavy on mobile devices. So heavy that it's really just prohibitive. And so what we're gonna do is instead of changing this profile, uh, I have a cloned version of it, so I'm just gonna hit the circle selector there. And I'm gonna go to my mobile profile, which is basically just a uh, another reference. And if I move my window here and we pay attention to the game mode, there we go, we'll, or game window, we'll see kind of the difference We'll see that the mobile profile is darker, so we'll perhaps want to adjust maybe our, our ambient coloring or whatever, because the only two values in our mobile profile are bloom and chromatic aberration. Those are the only two that have the fast mode. We're not doing things like the vignette or the ambient occlusion uh, or color grading. The color grading is what's giving us our brighter sort of light there. And so because we're not color grading, that's going to brighten up our scene a bit, we'll just want to go into our ambient settings and maybe brighten up our scene in that way. Uh, and so just to be aware, you know, th those are some of the changes we'll want to consider when doing mobile. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and just set this back because I'm not actually going to do a build for mobile right here and now. But, uh, but again, these are all things to really be aware of and consider heavier things on mobile are, you know, lighting, uh, post effects. Other things to consider are things like overdraw. Uh, and so if I, you know, again, come down to say Robbie, and maybe I just make my scene view look a bit like my game view, and I, I go to my scene view up here in drop down, I'm going to look at overdraw and see, well, how much are we overdrawing each pixel? And overdraw can be very costly on mobile as well. And so again, if I'm building for mobile, I might say, all right, well, the shadows on top of the tiles are basically causing two draws. So maybe. Maybe I should create some more modular bits where the shadow's baked into the tile uh, or, or whatever, right? And maybe just change my tile map because I'm, I'm focusing on mobile. Uh, in this case, again, this was sort of a, a PC first game that we're just sort of messing around converting it to mobile. So I'm not gonna be too concerned with that, but that's something to be aware of. And that's something, you know, moving forward, if you're building a mobile first title, those are things that as you're generating your assets and stuff like that, you wanna be conscious of. All right, and so, 
that's this step here. This is just the 13A, basically just getting up to speed with, okay, what are some of these mobile things we're gonna do before kicking off a build? And so for this step, what you're gonna do, and what I did, uh, and again, these are optional steps, is you can you know, go to save your scene, uh, so you can go file save scene as, that way you have a mobile scene versus a non-mobile scene, so you can make changes to one without affecting the other. And then you're going to drag the input, uh, the mobile input canvas and debug canvases, uh, the prefabs, into the scene. And they're located in the UI folder. And then you're on Robbie's uh, player input script. Uh, you're going to locate the, uh, the test controls and editor checkbox, and you're going to check that. And then you're going to set the thumbstick property to the, the thumbstick game object, which is in the mobile input canvas. And you're going to do the same for the jump button. Finally, you can play around with the global post-processing uh, or you could just use the one we have set up there, uh, which is aimed at mobile. So you can, on the global post-processing object, you can change the profile to that mobile profile. And then in the next step, we are going to wrap up, uh, do our builds, and take a look at the extended edition of the game.